Hey everyone, this is Jay, also known as Jay Nemesis on eToro, where I am a popular investor. Uh, this is our weekly eToro update for week 17 of 2018. Our weekly stats this week, we are plus 9.73% on the portfolio, minus 1.3% on the uh, realized profit this week, and 26 trades were closed in total. Top news this week, uh, earnings season is upon us, and this week was extremely busy, so busy that I will simply be unable to cover all of the uh, different earnings reports in this video, uh, as well as the report that goes along with this video. So I'll be making a separate article or a separate, separate post on eToro about that specifically over the coming couple of days for the major earnings reports that, I, you know, that I've uh, gone through this week. So if you want to find out more about earnings, then unfortunately you're going to only really get surface level stuff in this video, but hopefully I can go into that in more detail uh, in an article later on in the week. EOS has been added to eToro. So EOS, as many of you uh, will know by now, is one of my favorite cryptocurrencies, probably my favorite cryptocurrency out of everything out there at the moment. Um, it's my biggest position outside of eToro on my crypto portfolio. And it's, you know, it's it's a crazy, crazy, crazy potential cryptocurrency. So I, again, similar to earnings, I will be producing a separate uh, article kind of explaining my and summarizing my thoughts on it. And I will also be making it the focus of my live stream on Friday, which will, uh, of course, be uploading to YouTube afterwards. So if you're really interested in what I think of EOS and you've been waiting for me to kind of explain what it is to you guys and, and why I'm so bullish on it, then... Uh, Friday is the day to come and seek me out, I suppose. Finally, we have the NASDAQ wanting in on the crypto action. So, of course, cryptocurrencies, as we know from uh, one of our recent reports, uh, where um, Binance reported a huge earnings for the previous quarter uh, operating as a cryptocurrency exchange. NASDAQ wants in on some of that action. It's hardly surprising, of course, with, with so much money floating around. Uh, and they've been pr actually kind of uh, involved in the cryptocurrency space for a few years now. Um, currently, they have a partnership with the uh, Gemini Exchange. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if uh, once regulations are cleared up, if we see NASDAQ make more of a move into this space. Interestingly, along with the comments that the CEO made about uh, cryptocurrency uh, on the NASDAQ, of course, they came out against ICOs and suggested that it needed heavy reg regulation. Which again, not too surprising since it's coming from the NASDAQ who have to uh, go through an awful lot of due diligence for all of the IPOs that they are uh, dealing with on their exchange. Let's head into our crypto recap for this week. So again, EOS was added to the platform and it is actually my most traded uh, cryptocurrency this week. So, and my most traded anything this week, in fact. Um, it's actually quite a difficult period to be trading EOS since we are coming up to the June main, main net launch, which is now only a month away. Uh, as I've mentioned a few times, EOS is actually ahead of schedule on this, and they released their first release candidate for the launch uh, a few few weeks ago now. Um, but it's a difficult time to trade because uh, a launch of this scale has not really happened pretty much since Ethereum, and obviously times have changed a lot since then. There's a lot more new money in the space. Uh, a lot more spec speculative money in the space, and uh, there is a, a token swap that will be taking place. So if you have any EOS tokens that are not registered at the moment, then you need to do that, or you need to find an exchange that supports it, which, to my knowledge, the only ones that support it at the moment that have come out and said it are Bitfinex and Binance. Um, but yeah, overall, pretty happy with uh, the results from EOS. I, you know, I stuck with my guns and I closed a lot of loss-leading positions on Bitcoin, and a couple of other cryptocurrencies to invest heavily in EOS. And so far, it has done us uh, done us very well. Um, it's actually dipped a little bit today as I'm making this video, but we've, uh, you know, we've got some positions that are well over 50% up on where we bought them. Stellar has been something that I've really enjoyed trading recently. Uh, it just seems a bit predictable, and I can see it becoming a cryptocurrency that I trade a lot because it, it seems to sit within various different ranges pretty comfortably. Uh, in terms of TA and you know I've not really had to do too much fundamental research on news and things going on surrounding it. So Stellar is one that I'm hoping to trade a bit more even though my results have been kind of mixed so far I'm I'm actually pretty confident in my ability to trade Stellar uh, to a good level. Litecoin 
So Litecoin is something that I've said for a while I've had a few concerns about and you know I've I've really ummed and ahed about its potential place in the market in the long term. And recently we've seen it drop a couple of positions on coin market cap. It's now behind EOS and Cardano. And it just feels like despite the the potential it has to work alongside uh, a lot of the technologies that are used in Bitcoin with SegWit and Lightning Network, it just doesn't really feel like it has a USP at this point. Um, so Litecoin's one that I'm probably going to slowly close out a few positions until I'm you know, on a pretty light position with them. Uh, no pun intended. But yeah, I just don't, I'm really not too sure about the long term viability of Litecoin anymore. Um, as much as I love the community, it just, it just doesn't have an identity. Finally, Bitcoin Cash. So <laughs> as you can probably guess, because it's Bitcoin Cash, I was not going long on Bitcoin Cash. Uh, I attempted to short the market. Um, I was actually a, a very similar to what happened with Ripple. I was a little bit early, and then I gave up just before the drop actually happened. So this is kind of disappointing. Again, like my my instinct is correct, and and you know I read the move correctly. I just didn't execute it very well. But uh, hopefully, the more practice and the more I kind of test this, and the more I learn to to deal with. Um, uh, the drawdown that comes with taking a short position when something is going up, um, the more likely I am to be successful and see some really good returns on this in the future. It was only one position, so it wasn't you know a crazy loss or anything, but I just felt like it was worth mentioning in this update. On to the stock recap. So this, as I said at the start, has been an insane week for earnings. Uh, there's so many earnings results and reports coming through this week that I have not included everything on this page or even in the uh, weekly update because some of them weren't really that important. I didn't trade off them or or prepare for them in any way or anything like that. So um, I've just kept in, you know, kept everything pretty basic in this. So again, apologies if you're looking for something a bit more in depth, but hopefully I can cover that over over the remainder of the week with uh, a couple of articles or, or written pieces on eToro to tell you more about my opinion on the various updates. That being said, let's let's go through them one at a time. <laughs> so Amazon had a, a really pretty strong earnings, uh, saw their price rally back up to 1600 I haven't actually listened to the earnings call yet, and I only really skimmed the report, so I don't really know too much about um, what performed well and what performed badly within Amazon. It's kind of a predictable stock at this point. It's it's pretty rare that Amazon you know misses their targets. Um, so yeah, you know, a, a safe return. I actually closed two positions based off of this for pretty minuscule profits, mainly so that I can um, reinvest into uh, some other companies ahead of their earnings reports. AMD had uh, pretty good earnings. Uh, this was led by Ryzen demand primarily. They also uh, cited cryptocurrency as um, effectively contributing to around about ten percent of their of their. Uh, earnings from the quarter so pretty substantial they expect that to drop um i think they said that last time as well and it went up so uh your guess is as good as mine on how accurate those numbers really are but uh overall you know they had actually a pretty good earnings i'm still a bit concerned about epic and there was actually a question asked uh during the earnings call towards the end by someone i can't remember who um, and they were asking about, you know, the, the ramp on Epic and if they see more sales coming through soon. And the response from Lisa was basically, you know, that the trial period for pretty much everyone they're working with at the moment is coming to an end. So this quarter is the quarter that we should start seeing uh, some of the demand coming through for Epic. Uh, and they haven't really seen any indications of uh, people not liking the product or any, you know, any delays to adoption. Aside from just, you know, waiting for the trial period to end. So actually AMD is looking pretty good, but again, I reduced my exposure slightly because I'm just overexposed to it at this point and I don't see the reward being there as much as it was when I first started trading uh, AMD. And of course, if you check my uh, quarterly report, I haven't actually been that good at trading it. So um, yeah, that is AMD. Facebook, I had two shorts open on Facebook. I was, I was, you know, I already knew that I had slightly missed the opportunity to, to close it and then profit. So I was sitting on the loss and I figured it was worth waiting for earnings just in case earnings, you know, they didn't hit the targets or whatever and it went down a bit. 
that didn't happen. They didn't have an exceptional earnings either. Uh, they basically went back up to where they were before the earnings report came out because it dropped a little bit before the earnings report. Then the earnings came out, went back up. So I closed them both at a loss. Nothing, you know, nothing too crazy. Snapchat, again, pretty simple. You know, I closed my trades ahead of their earnings report. I'll wait and see which way it goes. But for the moment, I'm still pretty bearish on it. And I've been trading them bearishly with a lot of short positions. And I suspect that will continue. But I'm going to wait until after their earnings, um, which will be this week, to decide if I want to keep trading them that way or not. Google had a pretty good earnings uh, overall. There was some concern around uh, a few different areas, actually. But for me, the most interesting one, I think, was Nest, where they made some pretty substantial losses. They were investing very heavily. And of course, the investors were not not too keen on uh, on investing in massive loss-leading loss products, I guess. Um, personally, I actually think that it's uh, it's pretty important for Google to be fighting for that that territory of smart devices within the home um because otherwise you know amazon's just going to take it all so uh yeah you know swings and roundabouts i guess but basically we 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 got a small loss on our google positions we opened two positions just for earnings uh they both went against us and i think they were around about two or three percent loss on each of them so nothing nothing to cry about but a bit of a shame that we couldn't really make something a bit better out of that First Solar. So First Solar, again, one of my best performing cryptocurrencies recently, and their earnings didn't disappoint. They smashed their earnings. They hit uh, $0.85 uh, earnings per share. And of course, they opened the earnings call with an announcement of a new factory being built in the US, which will take about 18 months or so to build. This is actually important for quite a few reasons, uh, not least because of the trade war stuff. So, you know, if, if that situation escalates and they manage to get this uh, factory up and online pretty early, then they're going to do, you know, they're going to be absolutely fine because they won't need to import things for the US market. They will have a factory that can kind of sustain that that region of the world. Um, so that's, uh, you know, pretty some pretty good news. They've also seen, you know, very strong demand for their Series 5 stuff and Series 6 is coming along really well as well. So, you know, there's really nothing nothing bad going on in First Solar at the moment, apart from, you know, a few small delays on some of the big projects that they're working on. But that's kind of just expected with uh, with the kind of work that they do. Uh, Spotify has been uh, an interesting stock since it's you know since it first floated uh, a week or so ago. Uh, I've closed a few small green trades uh, going bullish on it, and uh, their earnings is due this week, so I will be opening a few more positions as we head into that. Uh, I'm actually very bullish on Spotify. I see them um, having similar potential in terms of uh, a stock and similar movement in terms of a stock to something like Netflix. So, uh, yeah, we'll look out and hopefully see a good result there this week. Twitter also released their earnings this week. Um, it was an interesting earnings call. It was good to hear Jack defending Twitter in, you know, in relation to the Facebook style um, Cambridge Analytica sort of scandals that have been going on. Um, and basically, you know, regurgitating <laughs> the, the same thing that I've been saying, which is that uh, Twitter, with Twitter, all of the data is already effectively public. And although, you know, an individual like you or I is very unlikely to go through and actually scrape that data, for a company, it's not that difficult to, for them to do. So um, although Twitter make, you know, a decent chunk of their earnings from selling data um, specifically about their users to companies just like Cambridge Analytica, probably, um, the reality is that that data is already out there and there's no real public outcry about it because the public are obviously aware that anything they put on Twitter is public um, and it doesn't really have privacy features aside from things like DMs. So it, it was good to hear him talk about that and kind of reassure people. Not that there was really any concern around that anyway from the callers that were calling in. Uh, the interesting thing I found actually was... Um, his continual sort of shifting, uh, shifting the argument almost, and and shifting his answers around surrounding the reduced uh, spending by advertisers and how that could potentially lead to uh, reduced revenue for Twitter. So a few people actually asked this question in various different ways, and every time they kind of went back to this statement of, "Oh well, we're just trying to work with our partners to make sure they get the best value they can." which was basically a cop-out and, and an excuse to not really 
um, dive into the fact that you know advertising spending is is decreasing because they're spreading their money between more and more websites. So I found that pretty interesting, um, and maybe that's something to look at as a potential weakness for Twitter. But overall, they had some really strong growth of users uh, in a bunch of different regions around the world. They've got some good stuff coming with live streaming. So I'm still pretty bullish on Twitter overall. I think it's got a long way to go. Uh, finally, at last, we've reached the end of our stock page. Uh, Microsoft had uh, really good earnings as well. Again, super, super consistent. Pretty much everything, every sector was doing well. Even things like LinkedIn, which has been kind of troubling for Microsoft for a while, is just continuing to gradually improve and get better and grow. Um, I think, again, that one of the big reasons that I'm you know, bullish on Microsoft for the same as Alibaba actually is their cloud services. And cloud, again, stood out as the biggest growth sector for Microsoft. So again, good earnings. It was a nice safe, nice safe bet. Uh, since then, the stock has pretty much retreated back to where it was. There seems to be a lot of profit taking going on after earnings calls at the moment. So we will, uh, you know, we'll stick with it because you know they're they're a good safe company, and I think I think um, all of their products are pretty sustainable. So let's head into our stats for this week. Um, we have a total of 26 trades closed, 15 of them were profitable, and 11, which is pretty high, was unprofitable. One thing you should be pleased with is that the average trade profit has gone up. We're up to 7.66%, and that's because we're starting to see the benefit of the rebounding cryptocurrency prices. So a few of the trades that I opened a while ago are now be being closed for a nice healthy profit. Uh, our average trade loss was minus 16.29%. Again, this is closing trades to make room for EOS, which, by the way, is doing very, very well for us, as you'll see on the next slide. Um, most traded instrument was EOS this week, and we had a total realized profit of minus 1.3%. On to our performance. So, as you can see, April has been really, really good to us, and our portfolio is up by 22.38%. Uh, with just one one day left in April to go through before we move into May. So again, most of this has actually been caused by EOS. Uh, we've also benefited from the wider cryptocurrency rally, but EOS on its own has gained somewhere in the region of you know 90% since it was added to eToro. So some of our positions uh, are up substantially from, from where we bought in. EOS is the second largest position uh, out of all of my cryptocurrencies, possibly out of everything I have now, in fact. So super, super happy about that. Um, We've, you know, if you look at it from a weekly standpoint, you can kind of see that we, we, this last week specifically was really, really strong. And again, like there's not really too much I can say that I did specifically aside from make sure that I got lots of EOS in my portfolio, um, at least for this past, you know, two week period before that, maybe a step separate story, but the past two weeks, definitely EOS is a key contributor to our gains. So overall, really, really happy. Hopefully we can bring this forward into May and we can have a, a good return to profitability for the rest of the year and get all of you guys that are still sitting at you know minus 5%, minus 10% up into the green and we can move forward and start making some good profits for the year. So looking forward, we have a bunch more earnings still to come. Snapchat, Shopify, Spotify, Square, Tesla, Activision, all of those guys are happening within the next three or four days. So if you're someone that likes listening to earning calls, then you know, you're going to have an absolute blast, I guess. <laughs> um, again, my thoughts on the earning schools that happened this week uh, that's just passed will probably not be surfacing until later on during the week, as and when I get time to really write up uh, my thoughts on it or present them to you guys in some other format if I choose to do that. And the reason for this is that, you know, for me, I think it's more important that I understand the earnings and I I look at the information and decide what I'm going to do based on it before I then tell you what that is. I think it's more important for me to get into the positions that I want to be in um, and, you know, and act based off of that information before I tell you how I've acted. You know, that's just common sense, I guess. And of course, it's super, super busy. So finally, we have... But the last thing on here, which was something that was added really last minute, there is now real stock trading live on eToro. So I was presented with this pop-up today, actually, when I tried to open a Spotify position ahead of their earnings. 
And uh, yeah, if you are now buy if you're buying a stock uh, without any leverage and uh, in a long position, you'll be getting the real stock owned, I think, by eToro, not by us directly. So kind of interesting. I'm interested to see where this goes. There's a lot of possibilities for things like uh, earning all of the dividend fees from stocks like Microsoft, for example. Uh, so maybe we'll see more an increase in dividend style trading. Uh, perhaps they're planning on adding more stocks to the website. Perhaps they're planning on expanding to new markets. Maybe Canada's going to come back onto eToro, but I guess then they wouldn't be able to open any shorts and they wouldn't be able to use any leverage. I'm not really sure where this is going, but I can only really see it as a good thing. So uh, this is pretty exciting. Um, again, it's just happened, so please don't bombard me with questions because I just don't have the answers. I'm pretty much as in the dark on this as all of you guys. So uh yeah, we'll wait and see where this goes, but it's it's exciting and I'm you know I'm looking forward to hearing more about uh how exactly this is going to benefit us as users. Well that sums up for this week I guess. Again, really sorry I couldn't focus as much on things as I as I you know wanted to, but this video would probably be like an hour and a half long if I did that. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you like this, then please subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitch. Follow me on eToro. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on LinkedIn. Just go nuts. Just follow me everywhere. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all next time.